What I'm holding in my hand is a blank. This is what reeds are made out of. And you can order these as blanks and you can make a reed yourself from the very beginning. It's wise if you're not going to make reeds from the very beginning your whole life, at least to learn how to make a reed from the very beginning as it helps you learn how to adjust the different parts of the reed and make the reed vibrate correctly. The blank is simply a semi-finished reed with cane from top to bottom. This is the basis for those musicians that make the reeds from scratch and more and more people are doing that starting by peeling off the skin and uh, making it just like an oboe reed right from the very beginning. You may never do that yourself but it would be good to find a teacher that would take you through the process and you should make a couple of good reeds because as you learn to adjust the semi-finished reeds you'll have a lot better idea of what the reed maker was thinking when they're making the reed. Now we have the semi-finished reed. This is a reed that you buy from the reed manufacturer. I think reed manufacturers come really close to making a great reed, but it's like a mouthpiece. They don't know who you are, they can't make a reed for you, and that's the importance of learning to finish reeds. A reed is never perfect for everyone out of the box. There is variance on every reed. Many times when we are blaming the reed manufacturer for bad cane, what we're really is blaming ourselves for not knowing how to adjust the cane. It's our job to finish the reed. A finished reed is uh, most often a reed that the musician has modified to fit their own needs. Even advanced players waste reeds for lack of knowledge of reed adjustment techniques. There was a story about Benny Goodman. He'd, before every concert he'd sit with 20 boxes of reeds until he found the one that was going to work for that night, go out and play, and then the next night when he played he'd go through that again. Well, he could afford that I suppose, but it's better if you learn how to make a reed that'll last you a year or so, or a season, or a week, or however long that particular reed's going to last, rather than be wasting time not finishing a reed and uh, just going out for the one performance and playing it. Next we're going to talk about the heel. The bottom cut of the reed. This should generally be sanded to seal the pores. We don't want the, the cane to waterlog. We want to make the cane into something other than a piece of Arundo Donax. And one of the ways to do it is to seal all the, all the uh, cells. And there's a lot of cells at the heel. Let's take a look at the heel of a couple of reeds. What you're going to notice on them is that they're not even from side to side. The reason is because cane's not even from side to side. So as they cut the reed, there's no way to, for them to correct that. But when I say them, the manufacturer. So that's something we need to know about. So when you're examining your reed, look at the heels. And uh, a heel, the, the small side of the heel may play harder or easier. It's hard to tell, but it's going to affect the way each reed plays. The stock is the uncut portion of the reed. The shoulder is the part between the cut and uncut or semi-cut portion of the reed. The vamper cut is the altered portion of the reed. It is best, after adjustment if needed, to rub your thumb or some fine wet and dry sandpaper or some reed rush or a blunt instrument over the cane until it's smooth to close the pores at this end of the cane. Now you have the cane closed both on the vamp or the cut of the reed and the heel of the reed and you can start making the reed into something different than just a piece of cane. The side of the reed is the part near the tip on the side. The edge of the reed is the side of the reed. The heart is the part in the center of the reed that many people think is the power of the reed and the, the quality of the reed. Most people don't touch the heart from many years of being told not to touch the heart. But sometimes they need to be adjusted, so don't be afraid to adjust any part of your reed that's not vibrating. Again, it's like a mouthpiece. I urge you when you try your reed to see what part's vibrating and what part's not vibrating. And just feel it yourself. Don't just play the reed and accept what it is. Actually feel the reed in your mouth. Then you have the tip of the reed, which of course uh, is the same areas the tip of the mouthpiece. 
and basically the tip is the reed, especially on oboe, but, but on single reed instruments too. I generally adjust the tip at the very end because it's so important and, and the adjustment is so fine that you want to make sure the rest of the reed is adjusted so that when you do the tip, you're just making the finest adjustments that you can and the smallest adjustments that you're going to make on the reed. The quality of cane and its ability to vibrate and have a long lifespan are of paramount importance. Nothing is more important than the quality of your cane. Again, nothing is more important than the quality of the cane. I can't repeat it enough. You can play a good reed with a bad cut, but you'll never be able to play a reed that is cut perfectly with poor cane. It just its not going to happen. So, I'll say it one more time. Nothing is more important than the quality of the cane. That's why right now I'm using Eastman reeds, because out of a box, I get at least half of them that work near perfectly when I take them out of the box and with a little work they're very good and the rest of them I work on and they're great practice reads. The thing is, is if you're getting one read out of a box or if you're getting one read out of four boxes on some brands you need to change the read you're using. You gotta quit fighting. You gotta use a read that works nearly out of the box. It's good to listen to your teacher about your read size but ultimately you have to be the arbiter of the size read you use. I had a, an oboe teacher one time, and he was from the East Coast, Ed Zolke, great musician. And uh, we were working in Las Vegas at the time together, and that's when I was just starting oboe. And he'd make me these reeds that were so hard that I couldn't play them. And not until much later on in life did I find out the East Coast players, he was from New York, uh, use a much harder read than us West Coast players. Plus, I was a beginner. So I was struggling and I was just, I was almost ready to give up the instrument when somebody showed me how to work on the reed and make it softer. So if the teacher's not giving you the right reed, you might have to change it a little bit and uh, don't tell them. It's also important, even though I love Eastman reeds, not to marry any brand of reed. Cade changes from year to year. The suppliers get their reeds from different places. Some get better reeds, some get better cane, and some get worse cane from year to year. You have to buy the cane from the company that has the best reed that year. The hardness of cane reed changes from year to year and decade to decade. So it's best that you not get married to the reed size, even if you are playing excellent cane. In other words, a three reed today might not be a three reed ten years from now or two years from now. So don't just buy a number. Buy the size cane that actually works for you. Also, from manufacturer to manufacturer, the reed size may not be the same. A three from one company may not be the same as a three from another company. And the same uh, with cuts. A certain cut reed that's a three may not be the same as another cut that's a three. I'm talking as of 2012 now, and I like Eastman reeds, and I urge you not to get hung up on the number of the reed. Traditionally, the good cane comes from the Var region of France. Uh, in recent years, there's been a lot of good cane coming out of the Mendoza Valley in uh, Argentina. And Arundo Donax, which is, of course, what our reeds are made out of, is being cultivated in places all over the world. It's interesting to me that the good reed areas are generally areas that make good wine. The, the regions seem to be the same requirement for reeds and grapes, and they tend to produce more usable cane. I've found as of this year I can limit uh, the kinds of brands of reeds I use to four or five different brands, but I never stop taking suggestions and I never stop looking for reeds. And if I have a chance to try somebody else's reed that they say is good, I'll do it in a second. There are many styles of cut, thickness of reed, and quality of cane. The only way to find out which reed is right for you is to, is, to, is to experiment. Experimenting is not buying one reed, it's buying a box of reeds so you get a chance to see what the average is in the box. One needs only to go to any major music store or internet music site and see the myriad of reeds available. Within each brand there are different styles or cuts that make the reed vibrate in a different manner. 
There are also reads that are not readily available in music stores and may require some knowledge of where to find them. It's worth looking. What is the correct read for a beginner is likely not right for the professional. What works for a loud player usually doesn't work for a refined or soft player. And the musician has to keep that in mind. My read choice for some time now has been the Esperto cut of reed manufactured by Eastman Wims. Relatively new company on the scene. I advise others to try them, and I advise others to try other reeds too. I like Esperto because I get the most reeds out of a box. I also use them on alto and tenor saxophone. Haven't had the opportunity on, uh, on baritone or soprano yet, and I look forward to trying them soon. Many times you'll get a reed brand that's good on clarinet, but that same brand won't work for you on alto or tenor sax or bass clarinet or contrabass clarinet or bass sax, simply because the reed requirement for those other instruments is different. So uh, one manufacturer may work for one kind of mouthpiece and instrument, and another manufacturer might work for a different mouthpiece and instrument.